Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Today is part two of my nautical wedding series that I have going on. If you haven't seen part one, I will leave that link in the description, in a pinned comment, and at the end of this video. But I'm really excited because today I'm making a super easy wedding welcome sign. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, that's okay because I'm gonna show you how I did it without using a Cricut or a silhouette. And because this is a Dollar Tree video, I am using Dollar Tree materials, but if you can get free or cheap wood, definitely use that. Use what you can and what you have. So I really hope that you enjoy this video and stick around by subscribing to this channel because once you hit that subscribe button, we instantly become best friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep. And please don't forget to click that notification bell and set your notifications to all so you know every time I post a video. Please give this video a big thumbs up and let's go ahead and get started. So as I stated in my intro, if you can find a nice thick piece of wood, definitely use that. But I'm going to use these wall art plaques from Dollar Tree and I'm going to flip them over to attach them. And of course, in the end, you can cover the back with foam and cover it with whatever you want if you don't want the showing. But it is up to you and where you're going to place this. So now I'm going to attach them using hot glue and binder clips. The binder clips are there to clamp them together and avoid any gaps. You can use whatever glue you feel comfortable with. These are actually really lightweight, so you really don't have to use E6000, but if you're going to, make sure that you're letting it dry really well and overnight because it does take a while. I'm also gonna add some hot glue to those little crevices that I have there just for some added security. And now I'm gonna flip it over because it does dry quickly. You can cover this with whatever you want. Dollar Tree has wood grain contact paper but I don't love how it looks so I got this six for a dollar at Joanne they were on clearance and I love that they're reversible so you have two options and what I'm going to do is I am going to attach four of them together they are 12 by 12 so I do have a lot left over and to attach it I'm just going to use regular school glue it doesn't have to be perfect but I do want to make sure that those panels are lined up so go ahead and add your school glue or your tape, whatever you want. If you are gonna tape this, make sure you tape it from behind, which is what I ended up doing later on, but I didn't wanna flip it over and mess up the alignment because just putting it side by side, you're not gonna get the perfect alignment. For the bottom, I actually ended up cutting off that little piece because it just looked awkward, even if I tucked it under. So I just cut all that off and then attached my pieces and let it dry really well, which of course school glue doesn't take a really long time to dry. So this was actually a pretty quick process. So I didn't actually film myself doing it, but once it was completely dry, I did flip it over and add tape to the stress points. I didn't add too much because I didn't want this to look bulky, but just enough to hold it together so that I can move these pieces around without it breaking apart. For the letters, I actually just printed this on regular computer paper. And as you can see, it is printed vertically instead of horizontally so that I can get the largest size possible. Now I did this using the app Fonto. If you don't know what Fonto is, I highly recommend that you watch my previous wedding video because I do show you how to use it. And I also show you how to use it in the video where I created that farmhouse laundry sign. I actually show you how to transfer these onto wood there as well. So now I'm gonna just put it all together so that it is aligned exactly how I want it and nothing is overlapping. And then I'm gonna put tape everywhere, making sure I don't actually cover the letters because it's gonna make transferring a little bit harder. So if you do need to trim some pieces down, definitely do that, but make sure that you are securing it so it doesn't move all over the place. Now I'm going to put this on my faux wood panel and to make sure that the placement is correct, I'm gonna put my actual faux wood panel on top of the paper and make my markings. And I'm using that line as a guide and double checking a few times. So now with some Dollar Tree Mod Podge, you can find this in the craft section. 
I'm just gonna go crazy and add a ton of it. Spread it around and when you do this, make sure that it is nice and even so you don't get weird pockets because this is paper, this isn't contact paper. So now I'm going to align that middle line with the line on the canvases and smooth everything out. I'm also gonna flip it over and start tucking those pieces in as I would a present. At this point, you can add a piece of foam to the back and just add some more wood if this is gonna be a sign that is facing all directions. It is up to you. Some people put their signs on walls. Some people put their signs on tables where you can't even see the back. So it's up to you and what you feel comfortable with. You can also just cover this with a bunch of floral in the back and no one will know. Because this is more of a rectangular sign, you can use it vertically or horizontally. It's up to you and how you like it. So now that I have picked my side, I'm gonna grab some chalk. This is chalk that I've had laying around forever and I'm gonna start outlining the back. If you saw my video months ago with the Dollar Tree Laundry and Co sign, then this is the exact same method. You wanna make sure that you're using a colored chalk so that it stands out. You can use white as well, but for me, it's a little harder to see. You can either cover the complete back of your paper or you can just kind of trace over the letters and just go a little above. So I am adding tape. I wish I had painter's tape, but my tape is actually really dull. And with a pen, you can also use a pencil. I'm just going to outline it. I'm not going to fill it in because it would take a very long time. I'm just going to outline my letters and if at any point you feel like you are not getting a good transfer, then just go ahead and lift your tape up just a bit and check to see if you can see what, what's going on. Because this is paper, not only is the chalk transferring, but I'm actually making a little bit of an indentation with my pen since I am using a very, very heavy hand. This is time consuming and if you do have a Cricut, definitely use that. But if you don't, then this is the best way to do it. You can also use that carbon paper, but that's actually kind of pricey for a few small sheets. So this is what it looks like. You cannot see it on camera, but I can see all of the letters. And I am going to keep my original letters there for a guide. This is the glass pen from Dollar Tree. And while it sucked as a glass pen, I'm actually just going to use it to outline my letters again. I was really hoping that this would end up being dark enough so that I can actually use it as the color because it was a dream to paint this in, but it wasn't and that's okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over with a brush and some titanium white. I used a few different brushes for this because honestly an angled brush wasn't going to get into all of the details but I did go ahead and take my time. So I didn't film myself painting this entire thing because the angle in which I'm doing it, I would definitely have some mistakes, but I did show how I was doing the first letter. And with the thicker brush, I do the thicker pieces and I'm gonna leave the thinner pieces for a much thinner brush. A very, very awesome tip, and this helped me save so much time. If you can find an angled eyeliner brush like the ones from e.l.f., it will help with a teeny tiny font. So this is what it looks like, and I think it looks pretty awesome. And now with these little thingies that come on the jars from Dollar Tree, I'm just gonna add them on the top and bottom for some extra accents. And now with this, it's $15, but I rang up for six. This is what I used in my previous tutorial, and I still have a ton left over. I'm just gonna cut a few pieces and drape it on to the top just to make this more interesting. Now, a bunch of people mentioned how there should be some seashells on this, and I hear you loud and clear. I just really loved how this looked like nice seaweed. I know it's definitely not seaweed, but it's beautiful greenery and it still goes with the nautical vibe. But today I am going to go ahead and add some shells to this just so that it can fit the nautical theme a little bit better. But if you are having a farmhouse or rustic theme, definitely skip the shells and definitely skip the little anchor and add whatever you want. You can also transfer another image with chalk and paint that in by hand. Totally up to you. For the seashells, I actually got the seashells at Dollar Tree in that tiny little pack. Now I'm just going to take it and hot glue it and press it directly into my little leaves. 
If you do want to go ahead and reuse this afterwards, then maybe press it into the paper instead. But if your glue is not too hot, then you can go ahead and pull the shells off and just peel the glue off. So make sure that when you don't want something to stick permanently, make sure that your glue gun is not really, really hot because it'll peel a lot easier. So now that I have all of my little seashells in place, and this looks a little bit more on the nautical side, I am going to place this on to a little easel. Now the easel that I got, I got from Five Below. It's teeny tiny, and it was $5. Since I have so much of the greenery left over, I added some to the bottom, and I still have some left over, so I can use that on a table or more decor. And now I'm left with this super cool and custom affordable sign for Lucy and Ricky's wedding. So if you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up, and as usual, thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate you so much, and I will see you on the next one.